Welcome to the Business of Apparel podcast. This is the place to learn how to start and scale your own apparel brand and fill it with loyal customers for years to come. I'm your host, Rachel Erickson, owner and CEO of Unmarked Street, and I can't wait to share this episode with you. Welcome back to the Business of Apparel podcast. We are going through the 40 to 40 series where I am revealing lots of information about me that I don't typically share with the social media audience or with the wider public. My hope by doing this six week series is that you get to know me a little bit better so that you can decide if this is the right community for you to join. And we are halfway through the series. This is already week four. And last week was a tough one for me. Um, Going through all the information and sharing with the world, essentially, as to why my husband and I chose to be child-free by choice is something that I don't typically do. I don't typically talk about it. It is definitely not something that is wider known. So if you didn't get a chance to listen to last week's episode, please go ahead and go back. Um, It was a big one for me to really get that information out there and be really upfront and honest and truthful with you about that side of my life. This week, because last week was such a hard hitter, I'm going to do something a little bit lighter. And I'm going to talk a little bit about a side of me that you might not know in the way of being kind of an adrenaline junkie. I am a huge believer in taking calculated risks. And so when it comes to certain things that we enjoy doing in our lives, my husband and I, we tend to do things where a little bit of adrenaline always helps. Um, The number one thing that comes to mind when I'm talking about this is how much we love and have gone skydiving. So skydiving is something that if you haven't had a chance to experience it in your life, jumping out of a plane voluntarily with a parachute just strapped to your body while you like free fall in the sky with the earth just coming up at you, there is no other adrenaline rush like it that I have ever experienced. It is the freakiest feeling, especially when you're like getting in the plane piling in with all of your other fellow skydivers, getting up to altitude. And then when those doors open, the butterflies that are in your stomach is something else. It is also one of the most amazing feelings I have ever felt when you put your feet back on the earth, like the smile that is just on my face. Every time I've been able to land from a skydive is just, it's bar none, the most exhilarated I have ever felt in my life. And that I think is why it is so addicting. It is something that Kyle and I tend to talk about every once in a while. We're like, okay, we're going to celebrate something like maybe we should go skydiving. (laughs) And I think our families think that we're crazy. I I think my parents actually erased this from their memory when we first started to do it because I was asking them the other day something about um, an activity that my nephews were actually doing. And I, they were doing like indoor skydiving. And I said, well, you know that they should, they should come do like the real life thing with us next. And they were like, what are you talking about? I swear they were, we just freaked them out so bad that we were going skydiving um, fairly often at a point in our lives that we, um, they chose not to remember that. And that I was jumping out of airplanes for fun. And so that is just one of those experiences that if, if you've never done it and you're interested in it, Definitely do your research, find a safe place to go to, but it is an experience that you will never forget. And those of us who have been skydiving, we're also the type of people, we're going to talk about it all the time because it was just such a cool experience. It was something that we'll never um, be able to probably top when it comes to adrenaline rush. So, um, So know that that is an experience for you out there if you are also a little bit of an adrenaline junkie. Uh, When it comes to other activities, we are really into car racing. So F1, um, my husband has been an F1 fan for most of his life. He actually grew up watching a lot of it. And so when we got married in 2010, um, we, we were regularly already watching F1 together. Uh, When I first really got into F1, um, Lewis Hamilton was a rookie. It was his rookie year, the first year that I was watching. And so if you think about how long ago that was, because Lewis is still in the sport, but he's kind of starting to get up there 
they're in age, he's starting to become known as like one of the sport veterans. Uh, and so I have always been a Lewis fan. It was kind of one of those things where like, let's, let's go rookie. And then I, I kind of always stuck with it. And so recently, if you're an F1 fan and you haven't been watching all the races and you don't want to get a spoiler alert, maybe like pause this or go listen to something else or fast forward for the next couple of minutes. But um, recently Lewis did win another race and it's kind of unheard of. The stats of this win for him at this point in his career is really, really bonkers. And so huge Lewis Hamilton fan, huge F1 fan. We love going to F1 races, just the noise and the speed and everything about it is really, really exciting. Um, it is something that we're really into. And so F1 fans for sure, another kind of adrenaline rush activity that we like to do. If you also don't know, I've been talking about this quite a lot, but we are also avid cyclists and I am what we'll, what we'll call right now um, a lapsed triathlete. <laughs> I used to race a lot, especially when we lived in Colorado before. And I'm starting to get back into a couple of training plans. I'm starting to swim again a little bit, getting back on my bike quite a lot. Um, I need to do some rehab on my knee. I have a knee injury from the last couple of years. And so I need to work on that so that I can get back into my run run schedule as well. But uh, that just the adrenaline that you have and the anticipation, like right before a race, like when I think back to when I did my half Ironman in July of 2016, I had been training for this race for a really long time. I'd been doing practice races. I was doing like sprint distances and Olympic distances. And I was practicing all of my different transitions and what equipment was I going to wear and how was I going to eat during the whole long day. Um, and the adrenaline and the anticipation that you have before you go off at a race like that is also kind of up there. There is something really special about it, something about knowing that you've prepared a really long time for this day, for this event. You've got all your best equipment on. You've got family there cheering you on. They're going to like hang out for six or seven hours while you go run this race is, um, is really, really special. So that's another thing that we get really into. Now, my husband and his adrenaline junkiness gets really into like cycling crit racing, where they're like shoulder to shoulder racing as fast as they can for about an hour. Um, that is a whole other level of adrenaline junkie. I have never done anything in that area, but knowing even just being at the start line and how much adrenaline you get, even when you're doing an individual sport where you're not going to like be bumping up against other cyclists and might be able to like fall off your bike. Um, I can only imagine what kind of adrenaline he experiences before a race and during a race like that. So that's something else. Are you frustrated by feeling like an outsider in your own industry? You're not alone. I spent years feeling the same way. Are you tired of endless research and you can only learn this stuff by getting a job in fashion advice? Me too. That's why I created the Business of Apparel online course. My years of insider knowledge condensed into video tutorials, demos, and downloads. Learn at your own pace, no fluff just key topics like building target profiles and mastering financials. This information is genuinely unavailable anywhere else. Grow your brand, become an apparel industry aficionado and unlock millions in potential revenue. The value over $50,000 with millions potential for your brand. Don't miss out. Sign up for the business of apparel online course today at the business of slash course. When it comes to our relationship, I also tend to be the risk taker. So that's probably not a very big stretch for you to understand about me, but starting a business and walking away from corporate, like being a corporate dropout, walking away from a six figure salary, walking away from a bonus structure, walking away from benefits, walking away from a 401k match that was starting to look really pretty in that account. All of that was a huge calculated risk that I know like Kyle needed to be able to come on this journey with me. And he's absolutely a huge part of that. But taking on that risk, taking on the responsibility to be able to own this business, grow this business, see where it can go, start this podcast, talk to you every week. All of that is a huge risk. And it's also sometimes really stepping me outside of my comfort zone. 
talking about myself every week is not typically something that you might have seen me doing five years ago, but now it's become more of the norm. And the more that I do it, the less it feels like a risk and the less that I get a little adrenaline junkiness out of it. But there was a time even too, before I hit the record button, even on a solo podcast, I would get a little bit of butterflies. I would get a little bit nervous. I wasn't quite sure if it was going to go well. And so all of that always felt a little bit like like I was pushing myself, like there was something to be gained out of this, that if I could just get over that hurdle, if I could get through this this shot of adrenaline that is coming at me, that's making me go, oh, I don't know if this is the right thing to do. If I can get through that, there is something better on the other side. And so I think that's why I love being an adrenaline junkie so much. And I love taking calculated risks and really evaluating like what could be on the other side of this thing that seems like it could be so scary to do. And so to be an entrepreneur and to start your own business, I understand all of us need to be maybe just a little bit crazy in some way, like taking on this kind of an endeavor and especially doing it by myself, like being a solo entrepreneur, truly like I have people on my team who I can bounce ideas off in certain ways. And I have people who support our clients and I have people who are helping me execute against what my vision is. But at the end of the day, all of this falls to me. I don't have a co-owner of this brand. I don't have a co-creator. I don't have a partner that I get to sit down with every single day in this business and say, what do you think of this idea? What are you doing? A lot of the times I'm sitting here with myself, like writing things out, putting things on sticky notes, putting it up on the board, mapping out what our customer journey could look like, mapping out who we wanna be working with next. All of that stuff relies on me and so that, again, is another huge risk that I've been willing to take on, but to see where it could go in the next five to 10 years, to see how many brands we can help by offering services that no other apparel consulting agency can offer. And I know that that's true because the skills that we possess and the way that we offer those services to our clients is unmatched. Like we cannot find other companies who are delivering exactly what we're delivering in the way that we're delivering it. There are a few people who are close to us, but they offer something a little bit different and they might be absolutely at the same caliber and quality that we are, but it's not the exact same service package. They don't have a lot of the same um, experience from corporate that we do. And so I know that moving forward, as long as we can amplify that message, as long as we can get it out there, continue taking that risk to share these stories, bring people into our community and get to know us and get to know that we're not in it for the money necessarily. We are in it to get information into the right brand's hands so that they can compete at the top of this industry. If we continue to let the Nikes, Adidas, Adidas's, and Under Armors be the only brands who can really be at the pinnacle, who can be at the top, and I know they're not the only one, but I'm talking about other brands like them. If we continue to not let these smaller brands rise up, understand what it is that they need to do, it, it is going to continue to be a, a bit of a monopoly when it comes to the, the fashion and the apparel industry. And we need more sustainable brands. We need more ethical brands. We need more diverse brands to have this information so that they can elevate and behave like the biggest brands in our industry do. So this is a huge risk. There's nobody else out here really doing it the same way that I'm doing it. It's an invention from my mind that I'm, I'm hoping will catch and grow and become something huge, but there's no, there's no proof of it out there. And so this calculated risk that I'm even taking with this company is something that I'm excited to be doing because of this adrenaline junkie that I am, but it's also something I'm really proud of, something that I know is going to be able to change my life and change your life, change other people's lives. And so we are going to continue to take those calculated risks and continue to push out there. So these are a couple of different things about me that you might not know, some reasons why I'm out here doing what I'm doing and how I kind of get those butterflies to come into my stomach when I'm on my own time trying to get something to really excite me and really kind of bring that adrenaline into my life. Stay tuned with us for the next couple of weeks. Last week, like I said, was a challenge for me. The next two weeks are also going to be. So we're going to be hitting on a couple of topics that I don't usually touch on. 
So stay tuned and join us for that so that you can learn some of the deepest parts of me. And then uh, we will be celebrating my 40th birthday as we close out this six-week series. And we'll be also announcing some new updates for Unmarked Street and the Business of Apparel. So we're kind of combining all of this amazing information together so that we can start fresh, we can start new, we can start in a way that is going to be really productive, really helpful to you at an elevated executive way, we realize that some of the information we've been sharing might be great for some people, but we also realize that we're not elevating the information that we're sharing to a level that you might need as a CEO or as an owner, or as a manager, or as someone who wants to be a leader in the apparel industry. So we are looking at pivoting into some spaces like that, more information to come, Stay tuned with us next week. Thanks so much for joining me today. If you like this episode, please leave us a review. And if you are watching on YouTube, we would love to hear from you. We love to answer comments on YouTube. So please go ahead and leave your comment for me. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much for joining me today. See you next week. Thank you so much for listening to the Business of Apparel podcast. I would so appreciate hearing your thoughts on the show. And if you know someone who could benefit from it, please share it with them. My biggest desire is to help other apparel professionals understand the nuances of our industry so we can all work toward making better product for a better world. If you would like to connect further, I love to invite you to send me a message through my website, thebusinessofapparel.com, where I do weekly trainings through my YouTube video channel, a weekly newsletter, blog articles, and so many more resources to help you start and scale a profitable apparel brand. This podcast is produced by Box7 Media, who I cannot speak highly enough of. If you're looking to start your own podcast, you can reach out to Jeremy at Box7 Media on LinkedIn anytime.